As Friedrich Nietzsche said, many are stubborn in pursuit of the path they have chosen, few in pursuit of the goal. And that's one of the things that really trips people up. At the end of the day, a path is an option. It's one of the ways forward, but it's the thing that you're doing right now today. So people get really focused on that. They make their happiness built around that. They think about that as the thing. But as the old saying goes, don't confuse the finger with the moon that it's pointing at. That's where you've gotta be really careful. At the end of the day, the goal is the thing that you're trying to achieve. The goal is what you're trying to get. The path is irrelevant. The path is really your best guess. It's the thing you think is going to work. But if you become myopically focused on that, if you think that the path really is the end thing, if you think the finger actually is the moon, then you miss the objective to which you're fighting for, then you're not gonna have the energy to keep pushing when things get really hard because you're going to have mistaken the way of getting there with the destination itself. And I think that people a lot of times throw hate on having a destination, on building towards some big goal, of having some grand thing that they're chasing. But as Einstein said, if you want to live a happy life, tie it to a goal, not to people, not to things. And the reason that he said that, people and things, they change. You've got no control over them. At the end of the day, the only thing that you really control is yourself. At the end of the day, the only thing that you can hope for is to be going after something that has meaning, something that has purpose, something that really gives you a reason for being, that directs your actions, that becomes the filter by which you judge everything, that really becomes the center, the gravitational center of your own universe. But it's the goal, not the path. So what is it that you really want? You have to identify that. To me, everything in life, everything in life starts with the goal and then work your way backwards. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in other people and putting your happiness in somebody else and finding purpose in something else and trying to obtain things. Have it be something that you're trying to accomplish. Have it be something that you're trying to become. And once you're on the path to becoming, then you can find real happiness. You've got two choices in life. Choice one, you can become somebody else. Choice two, you can become yourself. Now, I really wish that there was only one choice, but in truth, there's not. And most people choose to try to become someone else because it's a roadmap. It's points in a direction. You see someone, you respond to something, you admire them, you want to be like them. And in that process, you've made your decision. In that process, you've decided to become somebody else. You have mistaken the finger for the moon. Instead, you need to understand that being inspired by somebody does not mean to become that person, to become that which inspires you. It is to understand fundamentally what is it about that thing that excites you? What is it? What is its essence? And when you can find its essence, then you can find out how it would apply to you becoming you. And as Zen Shi says, a flower does not think about competing with the flower next to it. It just blooms. And that's really your job, is to see the outside world, to see the flower next to you, to understand the amazing things that are happening all around you, all of the incredible people and the essence of what they have and what it is that they've done to bring inside yourself and find out what does that look like when it's me. Not what do I look like when I'm them. And once you understand the difference between that, then you can really begin to be something unique. You can become that thing that you were meant to be, that thing that makes you feel alive and whole. And that's it, that's the secret. You're just trying to be something, not that's just inspiring to other people, but that you actually wanna wake up every day and be. And that's the fucking thing about it. There's no escaping you. Whatever you become, a lie, the truth, somebody else, yourself, whatever it is, you spend every day of your life there. And as Albert Einstein said, Everybody's a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. And that's what confuses people. People believe that they're dumb because they're not finding 
their path. They're not defining things based on what excites them and what they want to live with every day. They're just looking to what the outside world says is good. And I think it's incredible that there are other people doing things that are so extraordinary that we aspire to be like that. But you have to understand the difference between being like someone and trying to actually be them. So if what inspires you is that somebody works hard, work hard. If what inspires you is that somebody gets up every time they fail, get up every time you fail. If what you like is that they're themselves with all their weird eccentricities and quirks, then be true to your eccentricities and quirks, but don't try to embody their eccentricities and quirks. That's the surest way to become the fish that thinks it's stupid because it's being judged by trying to climb a tree. So as Scott Belsky said, when 99% of the people doubt your idea, you're either gravely wrong or about to make history. And that's the terrifying part. You're not gonna know. You're not gonna know the difference. But if you're chasing somebody else's path, if your whole game is emulation, if your whole game is to mimic that which inspires you, you will never find the thing that's real about you. And look, I don't know about you, but I can be wrong. I can be gravely wrong. I can have people think me an idiot and try something and fail as long as it was true to me. Because then the lesson that I'm gonna learn is going to apply. It's gonna take me another step closer to actually being the person that I want to become, that I want to live with every day. But I can't be that if I don't understand who I want to be. So look inward, identify your path, identify what excites you and go after it as if your life depends on it. Because in truth it does. All right, listen and listen well because no truer words are ever gonna be fucking spoken. You can do anything you want without limitation, whatever it is that you decide you want to make come true in your life, you can do that. It is gonna take an inhuman amount of work. You're gonna to have to be prepared to break yourself in half. You are going to have to learn more than anyone has ever learned. You're gonna to have to push yourself harder than anyone has ever asked you to push yourself before. You're gonna go way beyond your breaking point. You're gonna run until you vomit. You're gonna study until you fall asleep. You're going to push and push and push, and then you're gonna push some fucking more. And when you hit the limit, you're gonna push again beyond that. You're gonna force yourself into an adaptation response. And why? Because as Malcolm X said, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. So if you don't put the work in today, if you don't do the unending, back-breaking work of developing yourself into something greater, the world is gonna pass you by. The people that are going to own it are gonna be the ones that did that work. And the one promise that I can make you right now is that somebody, somebody out there is outworking you. Somebody right now is doing the things that I'm saying. Somebody right now is doing the work of failing and getting up and getting better and pushing themselves and triggering that glorious adaptation response that makes humans the apex predator. Someone right now, they're putting in that work. And if you don't, the future is gonna to belong to them. And as Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. It's not okay to make excuses. It's not gonna slow people down. It's not okay to ask the world to stop so that you can step out front. It's not okay to expect little of yourself and demand great rewards. The only thing that's okay is to be in line with the way that the world really works. And if you want to be great, you've got to become capable of greatness. You've got to develop your skill set. You've got to take what you have now, and if that's crawling, then fucking crawl. But you drag yourself ever forward to a vision of yourself that is so clear and so specific that nothing could knock you off your path because you, my friend, know exactly where you're going. You're willing to pay whatever price it takes to get there. And no matter what anybody 
everybody says, no matter how many fucking hecklers come for you, no matter how many people try to throw dirt on you, try to stop you, try to knock you down, no matter how many fucking people come for you at night while you sleep, you will rise and you will keep pushing forward and you will get better every day. And no matter how many times people chop at you, knock you down, knock you off the path, you will get back on. You will crawl till you can walk, you will walk till you run, and then you will run until you fly. And that, my friends, is the only path forward. So if you want a fucking future that makes you happy, if you want a world that you're excited about, get your ass out there and earn it. As Ernest Hemingway noted, the world breaks everyone. And afterward, many are stronger in the broken places. But my question is, why isn't everyone? To me, it comes down to the strategies that you use. There really isn't anything objectively good or bad. There isn't anything that happens to you that can't be overcome. There isn't anything that could happen to you, anything that when you turn inward, you can't find a reason to overcome. You can't find a way to put those pieces back together. And that becomes your job. It becomes literally up to you whether you're going to sit and wallow and woe is me. Because what happened, happened. And there's no way to take it back. But how you respond, what you bring to that table, whether you meet fire with fire, whether you meet that adversity with falling apart, becoming weaker in the areas that broke, or you bind them and mend them, and it becomes like a weld that literally makes you stronger, is a choice. And it's a choice only you get to make. But as Stephen Hawking said, when you complain, nobody wants to help you. There are many things in your life that you have every reason to complain about. You have every reason to be upset by the things that have happened to you. The most sinister thing about excuses is they're valid. There's a million reasons why you should be able to give up. There's a million reasons why you shouldn't need to try. That thing that broke you, you should be allowed to just sit on the ground. And here's the thing, that's your right. You have every reason to do it. And maybe people won't even think less of you. But here's the truth. You either become weaker or stronger in the places that broke, and that's a choice of how you react moving forward. The great news is, the best thing that you could do to become stronger is love yourself. And as Kamal Ravi Khan said, loving yourself is a practice. People think that it's something that's going to feel right, that it's going to feel natural, that you're just going to turn inward and there it is, the spark of love and joy for yourself, inside yourself. But the truth is that's just not the human experience. That's not the way that it works. There's going to be a voice inside your head and it's going to blame you. It's going to say that it's your fault. And no matter how many times people on the outside tell you that that is not true, that this thing happened to you, that it isn't you, it doesn't define you, there will be a voice that's going to tell you that it does. And that's where you have to fall back on process. That's where you have to realize that you literally have to practice loving yourself and that it's okay that no matter what happened, there is absolutely nothing that invalidates that you're worthy of your own love but you've got to practice it. You've got to be willing to do it. You've got to be willing to put in the reps. You've got to know that it's not going to feel right, but you've got to know on the other side of that is a vision of your life where you actually do love yourself because you took the time to say it. You took the time to practice it. You took the time to sit there and feel stupid and say that you love yourself. And sometimes just putting in the work is what you need to do to get strong. So put in the work. As Daniel Pink said, people fail to achieve mastery not because they aren't talented, but because they aren't disciplined. The wonderful news about the human condition is you can get good at anything that you set your mind to. It's just not going to be easy and it's not going to be fast. But the willingness to put in that work is what's going to separate you from everybody else. And I'm begging you to see yourself right now today as average, as no better than anyone else. But I beg you with more force 
than I know how to convey with this language to see yourself as malleable, to see yourself as capable of becoming anything you want to become, to become truly extraordinary. If you can find within yourself the discipline to stick with it long enough. And as Steve Martin said, perseverance is a great substitute for talent. Everybody wants to talk about who's talented. Everybody looks at the person with innate talent as if they have something magical. But to me, it's a gift, it's a handout. It's a freebie. It hasn't been earned. And no matter what it is, it's only the beginning. Even somebody that has talent, even if you get an early win, if you let somebody outwork you, if you let somebody who has more perseverance, more grit than you, then they are going to outperform you on a long enough timeline. The only thing I can guarantee is you will be outworked by somebody unless you pour your heart and soul into getting great. If you don't take days off, if you put yourself into it as if your life depended on it, when you act like that, then you've got a chance to be great. And as Robert Horry said, pressure can bust pipes, but it can also make diamonds. You've gotta want that pressure. You've gotta want things to be hard. You can't seek out the easy life. You can't just hope and pray that you can uncover inside of you some talent that's laid dormant that you didn't know about that's gonna let things be easy for you. Don't want the easy, want the hard, want the pressure, want the thing that's gonna turn you into something. Because when it's easy, you don't work for it. When it's easy, you don't push. When it's easy, you get surpassed by the person who has to give it their all, who's prepared to do blood, sweat, and tears in order to become that thing that they want to be so badly because they are so fucking angry that they were never given anything. And with that chip on their shoulder, they're determined to become anything that they set their mind to. So whether you have talent, whether you don't, the only thing that matters is will you persevere? Will you stick with it long enough to get great? As Thomas Jefferson said, he who knows best knows just how little he knows. And this has been one of the most surreal things about my experience as an entrepreneur is that the better I get at it, the more that I do, the more I feel lost, the more I feel like there's too much for me to possibly know and understand. And in that is my power. That's literally the source of my power because I understand that my journey is one of learning. I understand that as Naval Ravikant said, the genuine love for reading itself when cultivated is a superpower. The means of learning are abundant. It's the desire to learn that's scarce. But if you have that desire, if you cultivate that desire to learn, if you accept that you're in this big world that is far too big for you to understand every piece of it, but in recognizing that you don't understand it all and putting yourself on this quest to learn obsessively, to get better, to fall in love with the actual process of gaining knowledge, if you stay hungry for that at all times and you don't calcify your thoughts into dogma, but rather stay fresh, stay naive, stay hungry and foolish to really learn and grow, then you actually obtain power. And this is the part I want people to understand. Look past the words and hear what I'm really saying. As you take on the knowledge, as you're learning one thing after another after another, those skills have practical application. And it is that practical application born of understanding how little you really know that allows you to become far more powerful than the people that think they know. Because when they think they know, they stop growing. When they think they know, they calcify. When they think they know, their thoughts get brittle like bone and break. But when you think you know nothing, when you think you have to learn everything, when you're really just trying to figure out if something works, if it gets you the result, then those skills become real. They become tested by what you're doing. They are boundless because you're always trying to find that next thing. You're never self-satisfied. You're never self-congratulatory. You're simply asking, where do I wanna go? What skills do I need to acquire to get there? And knowing that each one of those that you get, brick by brick by brick, builds a real path to where you wanna go. So fall in love with the idea that you know nothing. Fall in love with the idea that learning is a superpower. Fall in love with that hunger 
want that, want to get better every day. Never, never be tricked by the desire to be self-satisfied. Never be tricked by the desire to be great today. Never fool yourself into thinking who you are today is who you can become. I don't care how far you've come. I don't care how many accomplishments are in your rearview mirror. If you fall prey to that, your past will always be bigger than your future. And there is one mandate that I make of myself and anyone else that wants to be around me. Your future must always be bigger than your past. And the only way for that to be true is to love how little you really know and to love how much you can learn if you just keep going. As Oprah Winfrey said, what you dwell on is what you become. Once you understand that humans are the ultimate adaptation machine and you understand that the brain actually builds faster and better connections between the things that you think on, you will begin to understand that it is incredibly important to be thoughtful about what you think about. It's incredibly important to pick a direction that you want to grow in, to decide who you want to become and then make that the center of your focus, your thoughts, your time, your energy. And if you look inward or if you look outward and you don't like what you see, remember what Jim Rohn said, if you don't like how things are, change it, you're not a tree. And that's the beauty. That's the beautiful thing about being a human. We are so plastic and we can change so dramatically. We are so good at adapting that we forget. That's literally what we do. But if you can take control of that process, if you can grab a hold of it and make it your own, if you can make it your daily obsession to make the most of your potential, to pick a very specific direction, to pick an end goal, an end state, an end identity, and work your way backwards, find out the steps that you're going to need to take to get there to execute and have the willingness to put in the work to have the willingness to be both the sculptor and the clay, to understand that the suffering that comes with that, of changing yourself, of making yourself into something great, is a suffering well worth it. It's a suffering that you should embrace. It's a suffering that you should run towards because in that suffering, you can become anything you want. So start to dwell on that. Dwell on a vision of you being great. Dwell on a vision of you accomplishing your goals. Dwell on a vision of you having done this amazing thing that you want to do. Dwell on an image of you being willing to sweat and bend yourself in half and break if need to and bleed when necessary to become the vision of yourself you always knew you could become. Dwell on that and nothing can stop you. As Epictetus said, he is a wise man who does not grieve for things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. And that's gratitude, isn't it? It's the very base decision that we all have to make. Are you grateful for the things that you have in your life or are you always wanting more? And trust me, I get it. I understand people that strive for more. I understand people that want something bigger and better. But at the same time, if you allow yourself to only think about what you don't have, to only be striving for something more, that that obsession will begin to overtake you. It will begin to corrode you. But ultimately, it's a choice. Ultimately, at any time, right now, in this moment, you can stop and think about what you have. You can put your attention on the things that you're grateful for and watch what it does. Watch what it does in that instance, the way that it changes you, the way that it changes your chemistry, your feelings in a moment can shift from negative and dark to beautiful with nothing else changing around you, nothing but you deciding that you're gonna focus on the things you're grateful for. Nothing but deciding that there are things in your life to be grateful for, and that is a decision. No matter what is happening in your life at any moment, right now, in the depths of a depression, in something going on terribly in your life, you could choose right now to think about the things you're grateful for. The breeze, a smile from somebody kind, a stranger who holds open a door for you, anything. But it's a choice. 
And as Einstein said, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. And what choice are you making? What are you choosing to focus on right now? Do you let gratitude fill you up or not? And here's the critical part, and I want you to listen to this really well. Whatever you decide, whether you decide we live in a world of miracles or whether you decide we live in a world devoid of miracles, you are choosing one thing to the exclusion of the other. And when you focus on something that you're grateful for, when you look at those little moments in your life and choose to see them as grand miracles, even when it is only a gentle hand on your shoulder, even when it's only a kiss from somebody who you've kissed a thousand times before, even when it is only holding the hand of somebody who needed their hand held, even when it's something that simple. It really is a miracle, that it really is something that can fill you. It really is something that will change your chemistry, bring a connection between two people, allow you to see a grander vista, or even just open a window and look out at the world and realize that you're alive, that this is all a miracle, that none of this is guaranteed, that every breath you take could be your last. And in that, you can choose to cherish what you have in that, you can decide to focus on that you have a breath to take. And even when it's something that simple, when you train your mind to do that, when you train yourself to decide to see the beauty in that, then nobody can ever take it away from you. And no matter where you are, no matter what's going on in your life, you'll be able to rise up and feel the beauty that is being alive. So take a minute at the worst times in your life and focus on the things that you're grateful for. I want you to burn into your nervous system the following statement because it is a fundamental truth of the human condition. It is literally the baseline physics of what it means to be a person. As Earl Nightingale said, we become what we think about. And that's an idea that I want you to hold firmly in your mind. That's something that I really want you to internalize. I really want you to stop right now, whatever you're doing, I want you to stop, lean into this video and listen to what I'm saying. You will become what you think about. Really think about that for a second, as if it wasn't just a phrase, as if it's more than just words, as if it were a truth about how the brain works, because it is. You're going to become the thing that you think about. And I know that you're dwelling on a lot of negative shit. I know that you're carrying a lot of baggage with you. And I know that as you think about how things might go wrong, that you believe, you believe to the core of your being that you're just planning for the hard times, but the truth is you're going to become those things that you fear. You're going to become the things that you dread. If you're thinking about all the things that you've done wrong in the past, you are going to simply continue that cycle. But if on the other hand, and let this be true, let this ring in your ears with the weight of everything that I carry. If I've ever added an ounce of value to you, if anything I have ever said has seemed remotely true, believe that these are the most important words I'm ever going to say to you. If you begin to focus on positive things, if you begin to focus on your capabilities, if you begin to focus on the potential that you have, if you really dig in, build those skills, drive towards something beautiful, something amazing, something that leaves you in awe that you want to create, that you want to become the vessel for that, then you will. You will become that thing because you will take those steps because you become what you think about. And as Mark Twain said, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do. So if you don't take those steps, if you don't focus on those things, if you don't manifest what you want to become, if you don't believe in it, if you don't see how real it could be, if you can't picture the version of yourself that you want to become, and even though people have told you that it's not possible for you, that the things you did in the past are never going to allow you to do that, that you're not smart enough, 
If you let that creep into your mind, then that's what's gonna happen. But if you can see that vision, if you can allow yourself to believe it, then you're going to take the steps that you need to execute against that. And if you go out there and do those things, you won't regret it, but you will regret it if you don't. So get out right now and build the person you wanna be so you can have the life you wanna have.